everyone. My name is Katie Dell, and I am the Community Outreach Coordinator for Vermilion Sea Institute. I am so excited to be joined by one of our very good friends, Mohammed, today. He's an educator in China and a good friend of Vermilion Sea Institute. He was actually also one of um, the alumni of the GFP program that has been through the Vermilion Sea Institute in his travels with that program. And we're so excited to have him here today talking about environmental values. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, good, good evening or good afternoon or good morning, wherever you are. Um, as um, I, I'm, I'm, I have been a GFP student, I'm still continuing in my last phase. Um, I teach environmental systems. Um, I've been teaching this for a long time. And this is um, the, the things that I've got to speak today um, comes from my experience of um, the, the Earth Expedition Program um, that, that is connected to the um, Vermilion um, Station there in Baja. And what we have seen there is a live example of some of the values that um, people hold about the environment. Um, when, when people's attitude towards environment is classified, there are several ways of classifying them. Um, in one way, they put everybody's attitude into three different categories. They say that some people actually put priority on environment uh, a lot. They are called ecocentric people. And some uh, put people's interest first. Uh, they are called anthropocentric. Uh, and some put emphasis on uh, technology. They, they think that technology has all the solution. You need not worry about environment and all those things so much. And here, what we, um, we are trying to do by discussing this three is to um, find a reconciliation between these three, to have a balanced view. Because what has been felt nowadays is that when people talk about environmental issues or technology issues or human interest issue, they, they go to certain extremes, um, but, but we need not go to those extremes. We can still find a balance because um, as the earth has, in, uh, the, the, the different communities have evolved over the time, um, the, the, the needs and the lower on resources have been changing over the time. And based on those things, um, the communities uh, and different species have been balancing with each other. And to understand that balance and to act responsibly uh, is what uh, is the need of the hour. And to explain that in greater detail, we have to understand why people have those values. Why are they, why are they believing in what they believe? And now we have learned that what we keep believing is hardware in our brain. And, uh, and that stays there for a long time. And to amend that and to, to, to make it malleable, we need to know more. And that is why um, experiences like going on these expeditions, courses on environmental sciences, um, particularly activity-based courses where you really go out um, to places and see what is happening. Uh, and it is really interesting. We, we um, through our GFP program, we, we go to different countries and we spend, we really live the life uh, to realize. And when you live there, then you realize that there are opportunities for maintaining a balance. You need not, or one, and no one needs to be at an extreme uh, of just thinking about environment or just thinking about human being or just thinking about um, technology. When I was, I was preparing for the, uh, towards the culmination of my GFP program, we are supposed to have a, a summary of a capstone project. And uh, it is during that time that I came up with this idea of um, having the TED talk. Uh, and in my TED talk, I summarized my experience. And finally it came out that our, our our attitudes are really shaped by um, our behavior and which is also shaped by our beliefs, the place where we grew up, the experiences, experiences that we have in our life, 
due to different different things like like what we are just going through now is an ex experience that has made us think about various things that we never thought um, like when we are locked down, we think about people, how we feel, how others are feeling, our needs, and how others are needing different things. So this is exactly what the experiences during Earth expedition trips or those field trips destined for raising awareness about environment uh, make, you, make you live through. You, you, when you live there, the impact is very different than talking in a classroom or learning it from a book or listening to a, a commentary or something documentary uh, on a TV. Uh, so, so I, I will I'll show you, I'll share with you just a screenshot of um, one of the model that I, um, I based my studies and research. And that model has been improvised a little bit. Um, the Isaac Eisen, um, the professor in uh, Boston University, um, he initially proposed this in, in early 70s, 1970s. It's called um, theory of plant behavior. In theory of plant behavior, let me just share my screen with you. This is this is a very famous model. Um, this, this is called uh, plant behavior theory model developed by Isaac Eisen. Um, this was developed initially. The, 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 this model, this part, um, has now been enhanced by other um, researchers. Um, in, in this model uh, of plant behavior theory, um, Isaac Eisen um, had proposed this um, to explain business models, but later on this has come to explain a lot of phenomena in environmental science, education, and, and as, a, as a curriculum designer, I use this model. What does this model say? This model says that every action that we do um, our behavior and attitude they are saved by 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 the kind of environment we have grown uh, by the norms we have experienced um, but when we translate our intentions to actions there are certain um, certain controls that prevent us from implementing or translating our intention into behavior and why are uh, why is this model very connected to um, our models of um, the environmental values? The three environmental values that people um, people uh, believe that this is how we are governed. One is called ecocentric, uh, anthropocentric, and technocentric. Uh, in ecocentric, uh, the people who subscribe to ecocentric um, value system, they they advocate that we should be doing our actions and behaviors should be pro-environment and we should put environment as a top priority. Anthropocentric put human interest as top priority and technocentric people, they put technology as top priority. Um, but um, the, well, the question why we are discussing this here is do we need to be at those extremes that uh, can we can we live with the reconciliation of the three or we need to be classified in one of the group what we have seen over the time that people's behavior uh, with this this sequester values have led to conflict uh, the purpose of this particular discussion is um, not to go the other way the extreme way and uh, be in a situation where we are in disagreement what I'm trying to um, do through this particular discussion is to bring them together, to have a reconciliation and appreciate that all these three values lived together can actually give us more rather than living with just one of them. This is where I want to take you uh, back to the experiences that we have during, um, during our trips to um, Baja or trips to um, different destinations that Earth Expedition takes or different trips that you might have made during your school um, trips to um, your local park or backyard or to the nearby places uh, they are around. What such trips do is they expose you to the conditions uh, of those places and then they make you reflect uh, on, on those aspects and this helps in amending the hardware beliefs in our brain um, and leads to changes. I will tell you um, why, why these, three, these three values emerge in society. If, 
if we ask in, in a population, we ask people questions about environment, people from different age group, they, they voice their opinion based on their experience because they have not lived the same life. For example, a very young kid who, has, who is now 20, 21 year old, um, that kid has experienced a life which a, another person who is 50, 60 year old uh, may, may have, their, their experiences are very different. This is why there are norms that has impacted their intentions are very different and that's why their behaviors are different, right? So let me, let me take you back um, to the kind of experience that, that we had, my generation. I grew up in an Indian village. I grew up in a very organic way, exactly the same way as you will experience in Baja. When you go to Baja and live in Alejandro's ranch, uh, the Rancho Gregorium, you will see that they live an organic life. They don't depend upon anything from outside. They, they have water coming from the spring. They grow their own vegetable. Whatever they eat, it comes from there. And same in Mongolia, when you go to Mongolia, you will see that everything they have, the starting from, from the things they wear uh, to the things they eat, everything comes from there. And that is what my childhood was. I, was, I, was. I grew up in a village. We had water, vegetable, everything that we were eating was coming right from there. We didn't have electricity those days. Then, now what we see in, 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 uh, in, um, in the ranch, you will see that they use solar power panel. But then you can argue, okay, that's not organic, that's technology. And that is exactly what I'm trying to say that there we see a merger of two values, ecocentric, anthropocentric, and technocentric values. My experience of living through um, this COVID-19 in China has also shown me something. We, when we were under lockdown, um, technology was one of the biggest savior for us. We were not expected to go out, but we can get everything using our mobile phones. In the hospitals in China, which were engaged in COVID um, care, they recorded a very high degree of infection uh, uh, among the uh, medical, the frontline staff, as they say, um, because because they had they had to attend to situations where they were they could not be actually not they were not careful they could not be as careful as they they were they were supposed to be because of different circumstances. Um, so they started engaging robots. Um, to uh, take care of those uh, those um, hospital wards where serious uh, COVID patients were uh, stationed. So one could argue, you see, those people who are technocentric, they say okay, technology finally came to save humanity. But on the other way, other side, the ecocentric and anthropocentric can have the Asia of argument saying that okay, it is because of technology we have got into this mess. Uh, it is because of technology this this particular localized infection has become now a pandemic, which was, which was not even epidemic for some time. It was just localized in one place and now it has migrated to different places. So these arguments will lead to a conflict. They will, they will start blaming each other. That is what we don't want. We want to live in peace because that's what is the intention of education is. And how can we, we have a peaceful existence and at the same time appreciate the environment and become become stewards of uh, environment. That is what I'm trying to do here. Let us, let us look at other examples where we, we can see that by merging these three together, all the three together, we can have a better understanding of environment and it could actually influence. We can, we can take care of those control factors that were preventing us from actually uh, translating our intention into behavior. Because when, when we are in reconciliation, the impact is much better than when we are in conflict. I, I'm, I'm taking you to the other model, which has, which has kind of tried to explain, um, explain the scenario where we have seen, research findings have proven that in these scenarios, the intentions can be better translated to behavior. This model says that if people have some more experiences like they have lived that particular 
thing that we want them to change, they can understand the message much better. This particular research was done on cybersecurity. They, they, they found that people who have suffered due to cybersecurity breaches, they are better compliers of cybersecurity laws than those people who have not suffered due to cybersecurity breaches. If I just translate this, this to environmental uh, experiences, environmental friendly experiences or environmental hazard experiences, we also see that people who have lived the benefits of a conserved environment, their behavior is a better translation of their intentions than those people who have never experienced it. I will share with you my experience of what I saw in um, VSI. When we were in VSI, in Sea of Hotez, I think that is one of, I, I lived in the Maldives for seven years. I, I've seen nature and natural beauty, but that was the, I, I used to think that there can't be any place better than Maldives in the world, but Sea of Cortez actually took off that impression from me and I thought there can be better places than Maldives. Um, in, in Sea of Cortez, what I saw, I saw same, same degree, or I think I'll say better um, biodiversity. Um, and it is, it is lived, the people celebrate their life every day because they are not, in, not only successful in conserving an environment, but they also get their livelihood from there without impacting the environment. And how are they enjoying their life there? Are, do, are, they, are they living in caves there? No they enjoy every bit of technology. They have speedboats to go into that, that area. When you go there, you will experience that. You, you find a perfect balance of technology, human interest and environment. And how, is that, how, is, how, how has that been possible? You will, you will hear stories of how those awareness were created when they were almost about to destroy that environment, then there were interferences of policies and regulation, then people got to realize that, nah, if we go on destroying this, we'll be losing it forever. And instead of that, they started conserving that environment. And as a result, it has paid back to them. Now they are enjoying their livelihood from the same environment while conserving the environment and also living a life which is not pushing them back to centuries. No, they have all modern amenities and gadgets to enjoy, which is necessary for a sustainable life. They are not overdoing anything. They are neither overdoing um, over conservation, just, just leave everything on its own. No, they, they, they are deriving their livelihood from the environment within a sustainable limit. So, so this, this is what, this, that's, a, that's a very bright example of living a balanced balanced value life where you are caring about environment, you are caring about yourself and you're also enjoying the benefits of technology and you're using the technology actually to, um, to conserve the environment. When you go there, you will see that we have those quail watch programs where when, when I went there, actually we had those um, um, whale sharks there and we were recording their, their spots to uh, inform somebody who is watching and maintaining a central database of my, the tracking the migration route of those whales. Leaving that changes your attitude. And after, after that particular experience that I had in 2014, my behavior, my personal behaviors have changed a lot because I used to pay, okay, I, because I teach environmental systems and uh, environmental sciences, I, 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 my practices were a bit different than any, anybody else, but still was I doing it just because I was, I was teaching it or I, I believed that those were goods, but now I, it has become a part of my life. Um, I, I switch off the lights uh, in, my, in my TED talk, you might have seen that I asked those questions to a whole full audience that were so excited to, to answer the questions at the beginning in the first phase uh, very differently than what turned out to be later. 
Um, and during after my TED talk, they were asking, okay, do we really spend so much of electricity if we upload a photograph on social media and leave it there? Uh, I told, yeah, I mean, it's every time you, you just retrieve those photographs, it has to be available to you for that the social media platform stores it somewhere and every second it is consuming energy. Um, so we do it very casually uh, without really realizing that we are costing the environment something which is not much useful. And these are the, these are the controls, these are the perceived controls that we, we, our perception has got a gap. We really don't we don't perceive the things that are really happening. Our perception gets limited based on our knowledge. And this perception gap is what has to be minimized so that people can feel what their actions are impacting. For that, one needs to be where they need to be to see what happens when they act in a particular way. My, my case in that TED talk, you might have seen that because I've, 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 this is my 25th year of teaching environmental science and I have majority of my teaching and learning happens in the lecture theater or in the lab. But is it impactful? I, my personal feeling and through my, my, my um, surveys, my students also um, gave me the same feedback. They told, no, I think if we go and live the experience, our, our understanding of environment and environmental conservation will be very different. Um, I often share my stories with my students, my stories of different expeditions that I have done in my life, uh, my, my life in remote islands of Maldives, how we survived, um, on islands without electricity uh, for years um, that makes them realize that life is possible um, in different way. And right now, because of COVID-19, we are all almost living life of an island, isolated in our apartment or building or houses, wherever we are. And we are not dependent upon many things that we were dependent upon a few months before, but we are still surviving. Um, Sometimes we are stressed. We are thinking that we have lost something. But um, I, I just posted a message on Facebook that if you make a list of things that you were doing two months ago before this lockdown uh, and go through each one of them and tick off the things that you think you are not able to do those things and make them a group, put them in a group and see how many of them are necessary for basic survival. When I did that list for myself, I found majority of them were not necessary. I was just doing it because I've been doing it for a few years now, like, like going to the mall, going for a long drive, or just when I'm in mall, I stop for uh, ice cream. Can I survive without ice cream? Yes. That's what I've seen people when I went to, um, uh, went on expedition, we never had ice creams anywhere. Uh, we we didn't have sour prawn. Um, if you go to Baja, um, you'll have you'll have that automated tap which closes automatically after one minute. So, are those kind of life possible? Yes, it is possible, but we never tried. I think if we try, then we can see that all these values they look very good in their own sequestered silos, but there is always an opportunity to get out of that and come to a middle ground. And we can, we can maintain a perfect balance and refrain ourselves from entering into conflicts, conflicts of values. And that will lead this, this particular planet as a very peaceful place and also bond people together. They will be using their energy and thoughts more positively than for fighting with each other. And, uh, uh, and added to that, the biggest benefit we will get is we will by default be doing things for the environment with less harm than we are doing now. Aiming for a zero harm survival, we are heterotrophic species. We survive at the cost of the environment. We can never make it zero harm environment. We are heterotrophs. We are not autotrophs. How can we minimize that? That's really our aim. 
and teaching a common ground without believing that my way is better than somebody else's way will be a waste of which is a waste of energy and thoughts and resources and skills. Let us reconcile and live a life with least conflict to make this planet a peaceful place. That's that's what I wanted to convey through this value discussion. This is this sounds very philosophical. Um, I in in real classes engage with my students in this where they experience their own because all of you might come from different background. If you might have spent a childhood in a different area of a single city, even if you come from an urban area, you must not bring in my different. If you reflect and say, you will see that there were there were instances which are not very common, but there are instances which are very common. Only with those common, common grounds, um, keeping all those exceptional things as an extreme privilege or or a circumstantial uh, compulsion. Um, there is always room for finding a common ground. And if those common grounds are ignored, um, I think we can have a simple life of being least to the environment. And that is what you will see when you go to um, these exotic um, uh, learning experience places through um, attention or um, expressions to Baha or um, uh, the ranch or any of those places. Uh, you, you get to live with them for weeks and you see that life is perfectly livable. There is absolutely no need to work. Uh, we have been worrying a lot. I think that is the time for energy to thinking positively. I rest with that, that question. Ask yourself that is living with a compromise with reconciliated values is more sustainable, more sustainable than living with believes in those values. If we get hardware, it prevents us from adapting to new situations like we are living now. Um, and we still don't know what will happen in the next two months. I, 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 in my school, I plan for just next 24 hours because I don't know what news I will wake up to next day morning. But things are changing so fast. So to have that that ability to survive in a dynamic environment, um, I think we need to have flexible values rather than rigid values. Rigid values will prevent us and lead to extinction. A compromised, uh, reconciliated values will give us much more freedom to adapt to any situation that we come across. I hope this helps. Um, we will keep connecting as time flows. Thank you very much for watching this. That was great. Thank you so much, Mohammed. It was great chatting with you today. Uh, I did have one question for you. Is there ever, I know you've lived a bunch of different places and you've had a variety of experiences. Um, can you pinpoint a time ever where you were maybe more siloed into one of those three values than balanced? Yes, I, I, lived, in, um, I lived in Qatar for seven years and uh, Qatari environment doesn't allow you to live outdoors without spending energy. There we, 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 our cars are air conditioned, of course. Everything, everything, you never get out of the, of your houses, malls, office, or car. You are never outdoors uh, anytime during summer. During winter, people go outdoors, uh, but during summer, it's not. So very often, we leave our houses, there is nobody in the house, and we feel like, let us switch off. We go for holidays during summer for two months. We feel like, okay, let's switch off the air conditioning, but we can't. If we switch off the air conditioning, the entire house will be spoiled. They have to repaint and redecorate. Everything has to be redecorated. So that is when I thought, okay, you know, I want to switch it off, but I can't. I'm, I'm just, I'm living in a technocentric world, uh, which is, totally dependent on technology. It's, there is absolutely nothing to think freely the way I would like to live. Um, I, I would not be doing this if I were really living in my own set of values. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of eco and anthropocentric guy. Uh, technocentric, yes, but not that much. But there I felt like I was pushed to one corner. Um, I was compelled to believe and live, it, live a life like that. Um, when I was in the Maldives, it was purely, purely ecocentric. On an island, 
you wake up, you eat rice and tuna that has been caught from there. It's completely ecocentric. And one would wonder why, and this is why when we were on that island, I asked people, have you ever gone outside this island? There were many people, they have never gone beyond Maldives. They have been from one island to another island. They have never seen any other country. And one gentleman, he went to India for his medical treatment and he comes back and says, oh, India is a huge island. You can't see the other end of the island. I say, yes, because India is not an island. It's a continental mass. You can't go to the other side of the island. Um, so this is again taking us back to um, how people's beliefs are shaped by the way they are, by, by their circumstance, by the, by, the, by the place they are living in. And it is hardwired in their brain. They just can't think of what you are talking about if you start talking about other values. Did I answer? Those are great. That's great. Yeah, that was a great answer. Uh, I want to thank you so much for your time today. It's Pleasure. been great chatting with you.